On the first day of Shipmas, OpenAI drops a new model and announces ChatGPT Pro. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Today is one of those days where we kind of actually just have two main episodes. The official main episode is about the appointment of a new White House AI czar, but most of these headlines are about the announcements from OpenAI's first day of their 12 days of Shipmas. They kicked off their Christmas event with the launch of the full O1 model and a new Pro Tier ChatGPT subscription. So let's talk about the O1 model first. The company tweets, OpenAI O1 is now out of preview in ChatGPT. What's changed since the preview? A faster, more powerful reasoning model that's better at coding math and writing. O1 now also supports image uploads, allowing it to apply reasoning to visuals for more detailed and useful responses. When it comes to this multimodality, OpenAI demonstrated the feature by showing the chatbot giving detailed instructions on how to build a birdhouse based on a single image. In a more technically impressive example, The model analyzed the cooling requirements for a space-bound data center based on a schematic. The updated version of O1 can deliver faster responses and has a 34% reduction in major errors on difficult problems. An OpenAI spokesperson said that users can expect a, quote, faster, more powerful, and accurate reasoning model that is even better at coding and math. OpenAI reasoning researcher Noam Brown showed that the model can not only pass the strawberry test, but can produce a three-paragraph essay on strawberries without using the letter E. While performance has generally improved a great deal, the model's performance oddly reduced on some advanced benchmarks. This included MLE Bench, which measures how well AI agents perform at machine learning engineering. There is some confusion right now around whether an earlier build was actually benchmarked, so this should all become clear shortly. The updated model is now available for Plus and Team subscribers and will roll out to enterprise and education users next week. The second big announcement was the introduction of a ChatGPT Pro Tier subscription at a fairly pricey, at least at first glance, $200 per month. This tier offers unlimited usage of all of OpenAI's models, including unlimited access to advanced voice mode. Jason Wei, a member of OpenAI's technical staff, acknowledged that this tier is not for everyone, stating, We think the audience for ChatGPT Pro will be the power users of ChatGPT, those who are already pushing the models to the limits of their capabilities on tasks like math, programming, and writing. To that end, the Pro tier includes access to an even beefier way of using the O1 model referred to as Pro Mode. OpenAI said that the pro mode, quote, uses more compute for the best answers to the hardest questions. Basically, the difference is that pro mode allows O1 to reason for a lot longer, with answers taking potentially minutes to return. OpenAI said they intend to experiment with O1 models that reason for hours, days, or even weeks to further boost their reasoning capabilities. In evaluations from external expert testers, O1 pro mode produces more reliably accurate and comprehensive responses, especially in areas like data science, programming, and case law analysis. Compared to both O1 and O1 Preview, O1 Pro Mode performs better on challenging machine learning benchmarks across math, science, and coding. In particular, we saw a 75% reduction in errors for easier coding competition questions more reflective of everyday programming queries. In their release notes for Pro Mode, OpenAI highlighted that they had bumped up testing standards to verify the performance boost is reliable. For other models, the company gives a passing grade for each correct answer in a benchmark, but for Pro Mode, they required the model to get the answer right four out of four times. Now, the discussion of pro tier subscriptions in pro mode is focused on a single question. Who is this for? Alongside the release, OpenAI announced a set of grants to medical researchers at leading universities. They said they plan to roll out grants to other disciplines in the future. And this seems to be part of the intended customer, professionals and organizations that require research-grade AI tools. In other words, O1 Pro is probably not the right choice if you just want help with meal planning, but if you want to research gene therapy, it might be the model for you. Professor Ethan Mollick spent all day yesterday experimenting with the new models and sharing what he had learned. He wrote, Been playing with O1 and O1 Pro for a bit. They are very good and a little weird. They are not for most people most of the time. You really need to have particular hard problems to solve in order to get value out of it. But if you have those problems, this is a very big deal. The problems it can solve well tend to be very high value. Think system design, complex problem solving, analysis for finance, or other uses. The value will clearly be higher than the price for the organizations and people who will need to use it. He found that O1 Pro performed well on a range of low-value problems like writing poetry or devising an investment strategy of buying ETFs. He also managed to get it to design a Turing machine with logic gates made entirely of swarms of crabs, inspired by a 2021 scientific paper. Malik summed up his thoughts like this, writing, Here's my serious tweet on O1. It can solve some PhD-level problems and has clear applications in science, finance, and other high-value fields. Discovering uses will require real R&D efforts. Few people have PhD-level problems. For most people, just use Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini. It beats Sonnet, but not at everything. Instead, at particular classes of hard problems that Sonnet failed at. Sonnet still dominates in other areas. O1 is not better as a writer, but it's often capable of developing complex plots better than Sonnet because it can plan ahead better. 
I have had access to O1 for a bit, but I use Sonnet and GPT-40 and Gemini a lot more. But when those fail on particularly challenging work, O1 and especially O1 Pro can sometimes crack things that the other models cannot. I'm still figuring out a general pattern and use cases. And I think this is a key story for all of AI. Even people who use AI all the time are still in a use case discovery modality right now. Things that seem obvious are not, and emergent use cases present themselves all the time. In this context, there is simply no substitute for getting in there and getting your hands dirty. Overall, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm. Palm wrote, O1 Pro is incredible for research. Very, very good. Eric Lancheris writes, O1 Pro is impressive. The responses don't feel like simple word associations anymore. For the first time, I feel it really understands the nuances and thinks things through. Stuart Reed says, If O1 Pro can help quants or ML engineers solve problems even 5% faster, then it's a bargain at $200 per month. That's a minuscule fraction of what their salaries. Danielle Fong of Light Cell Energy wrote, Just hired a new intern at $200 a month. They're cracked, no doubt, but I'm suspicious they might be working many jobs. And that kind of seems to be the point. The pro tier seems aimed squarely at people who have specific use cases they want to tackle where the costs are justified. And while some are worried that this is the start of much more expensive AI products, Adam Silverman thinks it's good for the industry, making sure that the business model actually works for continued advancements. He writes, I hope OpenAI charging $200 a month for pro will be a catalyst for AI and agent companies to start charging more for their products. Overall, pretty cool first day for Shipmas. And like I said, while that is mostly the main part of the headlines today, the one other story I did quickly want to mention just for completeness, Elon Musk's XAI has closed their latest funding round, taking in $6 billion in fresh capital. That brings their fundraising for the year to a very healthy $11.4 billion. That's a little over half the total raised by OpenAI since the launch of ChatGPT, and just shy of Anthropic's total fundraising efforts as well. According to an SEC filing, 97 investors took part in the Series B round, with the lowest stake being $77,593. We don't have confirmation of the other details as there is no accompanying press release, but the point is XAI enters the year flush with cash and presumably ready to ship. That's going to do it for today's headlines edition, though. Next up, the main episode. <laughs> 